Good evening. Uh, thank you for joining me today. Um, welcome to the Finding Mr. Darcy series. I normally have the little logo up in the top there and I'm sorry I'm starting a little bit late because um, it seems to have disappeared so I can't, I, can't, uh, I can't seem to use that tonight. But anyway, welcome nevertheless. This is the Finding Mr. Darcy series where every week I talk to you about relationships, love, sometimes just life in general. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about why we fall for people's insta lies. So the, the things that they put on social media and we, we believe everything that we see and everything we read and that makes us feel crap about our own lives. So I'm Rachel Blackmore, I'm a professional, um, I'm a dating coach, a relationship coach and I work with professional women to help them find the one by forgetting the frustrating dating apps and only attracting high quality men into their lives. Um, so before I start, I'd like to ask you a question. Um, I'd like to know if you have ever looked at somebody's Instagram feed or their Facebook feed or wherever else it might be that you hang out and compared yourself to somebody unfavorably and uh, compared yourself to them and thought that their life is much better than yours, their relationship is much better than yours, they look much better than you and so on. I'd love it if you would comment below and let me know if you have ever been a victim of that. Hello Chris, thank you for joining me. Oh, you heard me on Heart. <laughs> Brilliant, yes, I was on Heart, uh, I was on Heart FM the other day, if, uh, if anybody caught that. Um, so I'd like to know where you're watching from. I'm, I'm coming live from the Cotswolds. I would like to know where you're watching from. Is anyone further afield than kind of Cheltenham and Gloucester? That would be that would be great if you let me know. Um, so yes, basically what I wanted to talk to you about today is is like I said, it's this it's this idea that other people's lives are better than ours. So you know we we look at other people on Instagram and Snapchat and we see that they've applied these filters. Hello, Catherine. I can see that you're watching. And, you know, their skin looks beautiful, their eyes look shining, their hair looks all, you know, pretty. And, it, you know, we, we look at them and we think, wow, this person looks absolutely gorgeous. Look how slim this person is. And uh, particularly, I know for teenage girls, they, um, they, they spend a lot of time on social media. They spend a lot of time looking at other people. And they have people that they are... Um, you know, following particularly because they want to emulate that lifestyle. And unfortunately, it's not real, it's not true. And I don't know about you, but um, I know that people do pick the highlight reel of their life to share on Facebook. Um, and I know that we can all fall for this, this idea that, that other people's lives are exactly as they decide to share. Um, but actually, we, we know deep down that's not true. And I think maybe we've all been guilty also of only sharing the good bits of our lives as well. I mean, because it's not very often that um, we want to show that we're not feeling very good or feeling very happy or having a very good day for fear of people thinking that we're moaning or, you know, that we're bringing everyone down, that kind of thing. Um, you know, so I have worked with people before. I've worked with women who have thought that... Um, their life is is lacking in some way. They've thought that they um, they are lacking in some way. You know, I've had a client who said that she won't find a, a boyfriend until she has lost weight. That she feels like only the slim, pretty and she, you know she wasn't overweight by any means, but only the slim, pretty girls are the ones who find boyfriends or husbands. Um, and you know, I I think it can have a really big impact on on our lives. Um, if you're interested in, in the things that I'm saying here, I have actually written a blog about this and you can go to my website, which is rachelblackmore.com and there's loads more stuff on there if you're, uh, you know, if you are so inclined to go and have a look at the other stuff that I've done. Um, and so, you know, it can be said for looks, we, we look at other people, they've had filters applied, we think we don't look as good as them, our self-esteem plummets. We then believe that only people who look a certain way have a certain lifestyle and that that doesn't apply to us. And then it can also apply in relationships. And, you know, I actually, I a few weeks ago, Chris said that he was too fussy 
uh, too picky and that you know no women kind of lived up to whatever it was that he was looking for and I wonder if sometimes we look at other people's relationships and we see that they are going out and having fun together they're going to the theatre they've been to the cinema they they've gone out and got drunk together or you know they've been on this marvellous holiday together and we think that that's what makes a good relationship and we think if that's not what our relationship is like, or if that's not what we can see ourselves doing with somebody, then that's not going to be good enough. And so maybe the relationship, you, re you might end the relationship, or maybe the discontent in the relationship means that it ends anyway, or perhaps you don't even get fully invested and involved with somebody because you feel as though they're not going to be able to give you this lifestyle that you've wanted because you've seen it on Facebook. I mean, if again, if, if you have anything to say about any of this, if you want to comment that you've been a victim of this or <laughs> kind of way of thinking, then yeah, please comment below. I'd love to know your thoughts on this. Um, you know, so really, I just wanted to say that, that, that people's highlight reels of Facebook and Instagram and wherever else you might be looking on social media are exactly that. They are the good bits of their lives. They're the bits of their lives that they want us to see. They want us to believe. They want us to know about them buying expensive watches uh, and going on holiday and drinking Prosecco in the evening on a Friday night with all the girls. And, you know, they want us to believe that that is their life and that is how their life always is. Um, but you can talk to anybody on the street, any of your friends, any of the people you work with, and nobody's life is all just roses and and champagne and expensive watches and foreign holidays. You know, it's that that really is the best stuff that is happening to people, and it really isn't helpful to compare yourself to them um, and to imagine that that that's the the actual life they're living and that that's the actual relationship that they have. Um, I mean, I remember a, a few years ago now, I had a friend who uh, I thought I knew pretty well and I thought she was very happily married and I could see these posts on Facebook where they were going off together and, you know, the father had the son on his shoulders, they were going for walks together, they used to do loads of stuff together, go and walk down the canal, have ice creams and, you know, I thought they looked really happy. Um, and then, not you know, not very long after I'd seen one of their posts about, I think that when they were on holiday, um, I had a message from her saying that they were separating. And I absolutely couldn't believe it because I would never have known that there were any issues in that relationship whatsoever. And I think the danger is if we think that everyone is so happy all the time and we find that our relationship is, is uh, struggling or we don't feel as happy as we think other people feel or we don't feel as fulfilled as we think other people feel, we're, there in, we're, we're then in danger of, of feeling unfulfilled and dissatisfied um, and, it's, and it might well be that that's unnecessary and that actually the relationship that we have is a real life relationship, it's, it's what everybody has, it's just that they haven't chosen to share the, the, the less exciting or glamorous parts of that. Um, so anyway, like I say, I've I've worked with lots of people who've had this this kind these kind of issues where they haven't fully committed or invested themselves into relationships because they haven't felt that it's that um, you know that kind of fairy tale romance or or that heart thumping exciting um, feeling that they feel like they should have because they believe other people have it. And we've had to kind of unpick, unpick that kind of um, that way of thinking, and and start to be a bit more a bit more realistic, maybe about about what to expect from a real relationship. So, like I say, if you're interested in this, and if you're interested, maybe even in working with me, because some of this is resonating with you, you can go to my website, rachelblackmore.com. Uh, and I, again, I would love it if you would share this video, if you're interested in what I'm saying, if you think other people benefit, please just hit share, that would be great. Um, and any comments that you have, then please leave them. And I can see that Chris has said, maybe this will be his year. I very much hope so. <laughs> um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, it's been a pleasure. See you next time. Bye bye.